Hi, my name is Zico and I'm a technical specialist at Alpha Temp Technology. And in this video, we'll be going through the uh, four channel Hobo thermocouple logger, which is the UX120-014M. And in this video, we'll be going through the uh, setup configuration, downloading the data, uh, replacing the batteries and software use of the instrument. So let's get started. So the Hobo data logger uses a USB mini type B connector and it looks like this. You plug it into the side of the data logger and you can now plug it into your PC to configure or download the data. So you plug it into the USB port of your PC and you can now start your Hoboware data logging software. So to configure the Hobo data logger, uh, we we'll load the Hoboware software from the desktop shortcut icon. The first thing we'll do is change the units from US to SI. So we'll go to the bottom at the top over there and go from US to SI. And the next thing we'll do is go to device and then click on launch. If you wanted to connect the data logger to download the data, you'll need to go to readout. So if I click on launch to initially configure it, So what we'll now do is configure all four channels and we'll make them all as type N. So to enable all four channels, we click on the tick boxes next to each channel. The fifth channel is an internal temperature sensor, which uh, we will not use in this particular case. It's used for cold junction compensation, but uh, this is already taken into account. Um, it's only enabled if you wanted to know what the ambient temperature is that the logger is exhibiting. So we'll click on the first channel and we'll hover over temperature and then we'll select N type. Click on the second channel, hover over temperature and then go to N type. Same for the third channel and the fourth channel. And the logging interval can be anything from one second up to 12 hours. And we can also create a custom sampling interval. But in this particular case, we'll make it 10 seconds. The logging mode will leave it as a fixed interval. Uh, the logging duration, as you can see, is 47.8 days. That's because we've used uh, 10 second sampling and four channels. So if we were to change it to say uh, one minute, you can see the number of days is increased to 286 days, but we'll go back to 10 seconds. And uh, this basically indicates uh, when you want the logger to start recording, we'll leave it as now. So when you click on the start button and it configures the logger, it will start recording. And the next section says uh, what you want to do when the memory fills up, uh, you can get it to stop recording. But in our particular case, we'll uh, have it continue recording. So what we'll do is we'll overwrite the oldest data and uh, continue recording. So that's wrap when full. And then uh, click on the start button. And now what's going to happen is it's sending the configuration information to the data logger. And now it's ready to start recording. You can close the software. You can now unplug the data logger from the USB port. You'll notice that the readings are giving us minus 222. That's because nothing's connected to them and it's open circuit. So let's talk about the input connectors of the Hobo data logger. So the Hobo data logger has four miniature thermocouple inputs. Each of these inputs has two connections. One is a negative and the other is a positive. So if we get our thermocouple and we plug it into uh, the actual input, you see that there is a wide end, which is the negative, and a narrow end, which is the positive. Now, uh, the actual input connectors uh, are accordingly uh, wide and uh, narrow, so you can actually plug them in the incorrect way around. You can kind of force them in. Now, what would happen if you did that, it would actually, um, the readings would go in the opposite direction. So if, for example, uh, you plugged it in the incorrect way or you had the wiring the wrong way around, we immediately know um, as when the temperature increases, you'll see that the, the actual readings will drop. So let's plug this in. And let's give it a while for the readings to uh, adjust. So as you can see now, it's giving us a reading of 20 degrees Celsius. 
Um, so if I put my hand on the probe and start to increase it, the temperature, you'll see that in, in a second it will start to increase. So it's gone up to 28.85. So we now know that we've plugged it in correctly and the wiring is fine. To download the data from your Hobo Data Logger, simply connect the logger to your PC using the supplied USB Mini B connector. Once this is done, click on the Hoboware software. Now the first thing you'll need to do is go to Device and then Read Out, or selecting the second button. Do not click on Launch Device, as this will erase the data from your data logger and you'll get a message like this saying logger not read out. Um, launching the logger will erase the data stored in the logger. So click on no. So you'll need to go to device and then read out. I'll ask you that the logger is currently logging. Do you wish to stop logging before reading out the logger? Now, if you're not going to use the logger for a while, click on stop. But if you're going to carry on using the logger shortly after, click on don't stop. So we'll use don't stop. And I'll ask you to save the data and choose a destination. So we'll go to documents and we'll call it test. Then click on save. And it'll show you uh, the channels that you actually have enabled. You can deselect some of them if you wanted to, but uh, we'll leave them all selected. We don't need these two. And then just click on plot. You can now see your graph of data and a spreadsheet of the data. So if we drop that down, we can see all the actual data. So um, we can go through some of the zoom controls by clicking on the zoom button there, and then click on the hand button over there to drag it in view. We can click on zoom again, and then zoom again. Now if we've gone too far on zooming in, we can click on zoom out. And if we wanted to zoom into a specific region, we click on the select zoom tool over there, and then highlight the region that we're interested in, and then click on the button over there. You can now see uh, a clearer view of the data. Uh, various other options we've got are like uh, we can actually add um, horizontal grids. We can toggle them on and off and the same with the vertical grids. Now if we're selected now if we're interested in viewing the data from one of the channels we can actually hide some of the readings so we'll select the first one and then click on hide series and then the third the fourth and now we've just got one series of data and we can zoom into it. Like that. But let's enable them all again. Show series, select it and then right click, show series, select it and right click and show series. And we'll zoom in again into the highlighted region. Now the next thing we can do is we can actually export the data as a spreadsheet. So if we click on the export table data button at the top there. And we can choose what channels we're interested in. We'll leave them all selected and then click on export. And I'll go to documents again and click on it as uh, save, and it'll save as test.csv. And we can go to our documents folder, and you can see the test.csv file over there. Double click on that, and we have our data there. Close that now. Close this. And to save this project, we'll click on File, Save Project, 
Uh, go to documents again, of course, as test as well. You can save. Uh, this is not really necessary, but any modifications that we made when we downloaded the readout uh, will be saved in the project. So click on save. And we can now exit the software. And you can now unplug your Hobo logger from your PC and it'll carry on logging. Now if we go to documents again. You see that we've got a CSV file, a data file, and a project file. So if we clicked on the uh, data file, double clicked in it. It'll bring up the uh, menu that we had last time. I click on plot and we'll start from scratch. So we'll close that. Now if we launch the project, that will show you the view that we had last time and any modifications that we've made. To replace the batteries on your Hobo data logger, you can simply access this from the back of the unit. So the logger requires two user replacement AAA 1.5 volt alkaline or optionally lithium batteries. The expected battery life will vary um, depending on the logging or sampling interval, uh, the frequency of loading of the computer, the number of channels that are activated, um, the various options you've had uh, set for each of the channels. Uh, also, weather conditions can have an effect on the battery life. Um, under typical use, uh, it can last up to one year. This is assuming you have logging intervals of one minute, so in this particular case, we're looking at 10 second intervals. So the battery will last a few months. Now it's worth noting at this point that if you were to leave the battery um, in the date logger for a very long period of time, you could get battery leakage, which could cause corrosion and it could cause damage to the unit. So just to ensure you check the battery on your logger regularly. So if we put the batteries back in, and we put the tab over there, as you can see. You'll notice at the top right hand side there is a battery status indicator. So you've got a visual indicator of how much battery is left on your data logger. You can also do this via the software when you plug the unit in to the PC using the USB cable. So once the battery is replaced, uh, connect the Hobo data logger to your PC using the supplied USB mini B connector. And once this is done, um, we can launch the uh, Hoboware software. And just as we did in the initial configuration, we'll click on device and then launch. And a window will pop up saying that the power has been reset. And this is obviously because we replaced the batteries and then we'll click on OK. Now let's remember the configuration uh, that we had and we can just click on start. Uh, if however, uh, for some reason you do not get this and you want to reconfigure it, just simply follow the instructions that we had earlier in the video to configure the channels, the sampling interval, and uh, when to start logging, and what to do when the memory fills up, either we stop logging or wrap when full. So uh, we're happy with these current settings. So we'll click on start. And now this is going to write the configuration to the logger, just as it did in the beginning of the video. So now the logger is uh, ready to use. Uh, we can exit the software. And disconnect the logger. Um, and you'll see that the Hobo logger screen appears from being blank to showing us some values. And I'll show you a few extra features that you may find useful. So we'll first launch the Hobleware software. And the first thing we'll do is we'll check what the battery uh, status is and the memory is on the device. So we'll go to device and then go to status.
and over here you can see what the battery level is and the memory that's actually being used at the moment uh, what we set it at so at the moment it's wrap when full when it was launched logging interval the channels that are enabled and what types they are the screen refresh rate so if you weren't sure what uh, settings you've had or you wanted to know what the battery level was or how much memory was being used you can click on this option so click on ok the next thing I want to show you is um, if you want to, uh, for example, to stop the data logger uh, from running, uh, you don't want to use it anymore, just click on the uh, button over here, the stop device. This will stop the logger from logging, so click on yes when the window pops up. And the display on the Hobo logger will say stop, click on OK. And we can disconnect the uh, hobo logger from the uh, PC so we can do this if you wanted to uh, conserve some battery and you're not using your logger and this concludes this uh, video on the hobo data logger